Joining us now, Greens MP Max Chandler Mather, who's the Green spokesperson in this area. Thanks for your time. There's been a lot of horse trading on the Greens. Once we t talk to housing, uh, it always becomes things such as negative gearing rent caps and things the government's basically ruled out. So on the merits of this proposal, what do you think of it? Well, it's a scheme that will screw over 99.8% of renters who don't get access to it every year. Not only that, it'll drive up property prices. We have senior economists who are commenting on the New South Wales shared equity scheme, very similar to the one Labor proposed. And what they said is if you put more money into the demand for housing, it will drive up the cost of housing. And that's a big problem where 99.8% of renters, many of whom might want to buy a home, don't get access to it. And I would note, by the way, the government hasn't necessarily ruled out shifting on negative gearing or the capital gains tax discount. They're often quite tricky in avoiding questions about it. And I think that's because they know yeah. those are the tax handouts that are driving up property it prices. It seems like you're saying it's tiny, won't do anything, and it'll push up prices. It, it can't be both. If it's so small, it's not going to do anything to prices. You have 400,000 new home buyers a year. It's not much demand, is it? Well, the New South Wales scheme has 3,000 places a year. Uh, the government scheme has 10,000 places a year. And uh, the, those senior economists, the former Saul Eslake, the former ANZ chief economist, said the New South Wales scheme could have an inflationary impact on house prices. Again, this is exactly why, if you want to deal with housing affordability, and this is the government's only piece of legislation for the House this year to deal with housing affordability, and we think it's not good enough that they have a scheme that is going to drive up the cost so, of housing. So can you envisage any circumstance, given you're so anti it, that you would agree to pass this legislation? Well, we've said to the government we want shifts on three areas. We want a phasing out of the big tax handouts for property investors, denying millions of renters a home. We want nationally coordinated caps on rent increases in some form. And we want a much larger investment in public housing. But you're saying it's bad legislation. Mm. So why are you still prepared to pass it if you get those other... Measures. Well, we don't want to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. We understand that to get uh, our policies through Parliament, there does have to be a little bit of to and fro. And that's a message for the government as well. They don't have a majority in the Senate. And I don't think the public would be happy with a government that says it's their way or the highway when the Australian public expects them to work with Parliament to work out real solutions to the housing crisis. The Greens took a shared equity scheme to the 2022 mm. election uh, given that some people would have voted for you expecting mm. this kind of policy, are you still willing to stand in the way of one getting through? Very different policy. So that was a policy for the government to build good quality housing and then sell it for $300,000. So they would build the homes and then sell them to people who couldn't afford to buy in the private market. The government scheme is giving people money to go into an already overinflated private market without building any new housing and then giving them money to go to auctions to bid up the price of housing. Now, that is going to make the housing crisis worse. It's exactly why, why, by the way, we do need to deal with negative gearing and the capital gains tax discount because that's putting money in property investors' pockets to further bid up the price of now, housing. What's going on with the Greens? Because it's like you're the Socialist Alliance at the moment or you're the Renters' Party. I mean, it used to be all about the environment. Now it's increasingly about trying to get the, the votes of renters. Are you, they used to call it the good old watermelon, you and Adam Band. You're basically socialists in green clothing. Well... I wouldn't describe shifting on negative gearing and the capital gains tax discount as socialism. That used to be considered a moderate policy in Australia. I wouldn't consider building public housing to be that. That's something that governments of all stripes in the 20th century supported. Robert Menzies used to get up in federal parliament and brag about how much public housing the federal government was building. I think what we've seen is the major parties shift closer and closer together offer very little to the public and has left the Greens often out there talking about policy solutions that actually have broad support in the public. You said uh, recently that there are enough properties for people to live in, enough homes, uh, a million vacant on census night. Mm. It, it was fact-checked by the SMH. They said 43% of unoccupied homes on census night were people not at home. Mm. Do you stand by that, that claim that there are enough properties for people to live in? The point I was making is that we have a property system that incentivises property investors to leave homes vacant because they make money by selling it and then getting a 50% discount on the capital gains they make on that It's property. not as big a problem as you suggested. Well, I looked at that analysis. They relied on um, 2017 analysis. I would point out there was a big difference between census night in around that period and the census night that occurred during COVID, where a lot more people were in their homes because of lockdowns. 
Uh, putting that aside, uh, the other point we've made is we do need more housing for people coming to this country, but the government needs to get on building that, in particular with public housing, because housing commencements, so at, government talks about supply, it's at a 10-year low. It's because the government is not stepping up at a time where it's too expensive for property developers to build and building housing themselves which is exactly what Robert Menzies, a Liberal Prime Minister, and okay. Labor Prime Ministers so, did in the 20th century. On those incentives, I mean, it's, it's not really an incentive to leave the place empty for five years. People have renters in there. They're, sure, you can deduct, deduct ta tax, but that's not the normal path for investors to have an empty house for five years and then sell it. No, that's exactly what the capital gains tax discount did. So if you look at the rate of negative gearing, so people making a loss on their rental property, mm -hmm pre the introduction of that discount and after, you saw a massive skyrocketing in that but rate. But that doesn't mean it's empty. A loss doesn't mean it's empty. That, it, that, 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 they just, they're not the same thing. That can just mean maybe they were charging less rent because they didn't mind the tax loss. Well, no, but the point is that the way a property investor makes money is not on the rent long term, mm. it's selling the house and then 50% of that profit right now, the government gives to them Tax free. Right, but negatively geared doesn't mean they're not charging rent. But no, no, of course. But the point I'm making is the tax system is designed to encourage property investors well, it to make... it softens the blow. It's not designed to have an empty house. It softens the blow if you can't get someone in for... Well, no, that's negative gearing. That softens the blow. Mm. The capital gains tax discount is the uh, bucket of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's you sell your home. Right now, property investors set, buys a home and the way they make money is in a few years' time they sell it and then they make a massive capital gains that they get 50% of that tax free. And by the way, 83% of that benefit of the capital gains discount goes to the top 10% of earners. So this is, this is a discount that's costing the government billions of dollars, driving up the price of housing, locking out renters and actually going to the wealthiest in this country. Shouldn't your MPs with negatively geared properties either divest themselves of those properties mm. or not claim the tax deduction? Look, it's so hypocritical. No, I would disagree. That that every single Greens MP tomorrow would vote to phase out those tax handouts for property investors. The point we take advantage of them in the meantime. Well, the point we've made is that 75% of all Labor parliamentarians have investment properties, and the problem is they also oppose any changes to the tax handouts but for what property about your investors. Guys? I mean, shouldn't they lead from the front if they think it's such an issue instead of you know collecting the money? Well, our, our policy is not to make every property investor sell their home. Our policy is to phase out the tax handouts for property investors that are locking out millions of renters from ever being able to buy a home. Uh, phase look, it out for yourselves first and, you know, make a start. <laughs> well, we're trying to in Parliament. I mean, we're putting our necks on the line here and going out there to try and push the government to phase out these tax handouts for property investors. And to be frank, the tax system has been created for decades now to encourage people to buy investment properties. Okay. We don't begrudge people that. We do begrudge a government standing in the way of tax reform. Max Chalamet, I've got to leave it there. Thank you.